Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for making time out of your Fridays to attend Professor uh, Tranthine's seminar. Uh, uh, professor Tranthine is an associate professor at the University of Warwick in the United Kingdom. Uh, he obtained his PhD in computer science from Southampton, uh, the University of Southampton in 2012, uh, under the supervision of the very famous uh, Professor Nick Jennings and Alex Rogers. Uh, Long has been doing active research in a number of key areas of AI and multi-agent systems, mainly focusing in multi multi bandits, game theory, and incentive engineering, and their applications to crowdsourcing and AI for good. He has published more than 60 papers at top AI conferences and journals, and has received a number of national and international awards, such as the AAAI 2012 Outstanding Paper Award, the EKI 2012 Best Student Paper Award, the HKI 2019 Early Career Spotlight Talk Award, and many other awards that, that are, you know, uh, it'll take a long time for me to get through his awards. So I'm going to keep it short. Uh, sorry, Long. Uh, uh, long currently serves as a board member of the FMR's directory board, which is the main international governing body of the uh, International Federation for AMAS, which is a major subfield of the AI community. And he's also serving as the local chair of the AMAS 2020, 2021 conference, which is going to be held virtually. Thank you for that long. Uh, uh, you know, on behalf of uh, Penn State, we would like to welcome you here uh, long. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, I know it's evening there in, in UK and you still have made time out of your schedule to uh, be with us and to sh share your research with us. And, you know, all of us are very excited to hear you speak. With that, you know, uh, please feel free to, to start presenting whenever you're ready. Thank you, Amuya, for the, uh, the introduction and for the invite as well. So I just would like to correct one thing that this 3 p.m. afternoon here is not evening yet, but uh, this is a perfect time for me because both my children are sleeping. Okay. Well, I hope they're not going to wake up during my talk and then come asking for things such as pencil and papers. Anyway, so um, welcome to the uh, seminar and thank you very much again for the invite. And today I'm going to talk about uh, something I, I call COPS Bandit and AI for Social Good. Um, so COPS here is actually is combinatorial optimization. Uh, and um, I'm going to talk about two of the recent, most recent papers we, we had uh, uh, last year about how to combine computer optimization online with online learning and apply them to uh, AI for social good. Okay, so you're probably quite familiar with uh, these 17 uh, grand challenges that set up by the United Nations a couple of years back. Uh, so these, uh, these 17 sustainable development goals, they are meant to uh, uh, improve uh, the, the, the not just our lives uh, on the earth, but uh, but uh, every living thing, every everything uh, within uh, our our planet by 2030. And uh, uh, alongside these uh, these uh, directives, uh, the AI committee has also started uh, aligning their 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 research uh, uh, with these uh, goals. Um, yeah, probably because we, we started people from, from our community started thinking that maybe it's not just enough, you know, building killer robots and, and, and maximizing our revenues uh, using AI technologies, but maybe, you know, try to, to use it for, for, for good as well. And, and things just uh, got uh, more popular and, 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 and more well developed in the last, I would say, five, six years. Probably starting with the with the, the book from uh, Stefano Ermon's, uh, you can see my cursor here. So Stefano Ermon's uh, uh, research lab at the Stanford uh, in I think 2015, 2016, they published a paper of Nature where they, they analyzed uh, satellite uh, image data to predict uh, poverty related uh, um, uh, um, uh, parameters and 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 and, and predictions and you know predict ahead what would happen, what will happen in Africa if we don't inter intervene. And that's kind of like used as a, was used as a, as a decision, uh, support decision uh, um, making system for UN uh, officials to, to um, uh, plan their, their um, uh, you know, future plans, uh, how to help Af Africa. And that is later was picked up by, by uh, William Tambay at that time was at the USC, USC and now at Harvard. Uh, and he founded uh, the Center of Research in Computational Society, which, you know, the main focus was to use AI to, uh, to, uh, to tackle societal challenges. And then nowadays we have quite a lot of, 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 uh, of research labs with similar kind of research uh, focus around the world, such as uh, MILA, uh, in Montreal, uh, um, led by Joshua Benjo, or in Canada, another research center is the Amy Center, the Adata, 
or we can also mention in UK, we have the uh, Alan Turing Institute, which has a lot of, of uh, working research working groups focusing on, on AI for social good. Okay, so um, the, the mainstream AI for social good research uh, typically focuses on using classical machine learning uh, approaches to, uh, to analyze and understand uh, the data collected from uh, uh, interacting with people, from, uh, from interacting with environment, and so on and so forth. So these, uh, these techniques uh, are meant to help us better understand uh, what's happening there and then predict the future uh, in, uh, more accurately. So I also already mentioned this uh, poverty prediction uh, from uh, uh, Almond's, uh, Almond's group, uh, but you can also uh, think about the disease detection or prediction uh, work or uh, air pollution modeling or even you know, using AI for uh, education uh, in the uh, education um, sector. But uh, today, what I would like to, to talk about is, uh, is uh, something a little bit different from, uh, from this line of research. So, so when you think about AI for social good, it's not just about uh, um, understanding the, uh, the underlying model and the data and, uh, and predicting what will happen uh, in the future, but also you would also like to uh, in, interfere and make a decision and then change uh, the, 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 the future events if, 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 if that thing is, is not beneficial for, for, for humankind or for, for the environment. So basically you kind of need to do certain resource allocation problems, but not just once, but probably repeatedly interacting with the environment. Um, and this has not been really in the focus. This type of problem has not been really in the focus of, of you know, the mainstream machine learning community when, when they talk about uh, um, tackling social good uh, challenges. Okay, so just to give you some example of what I mean by, by resource uh, allocation or sequential decision making problems here. For example, think about you know, COVID-19 spread prediction. It's just, you know, you can predict how it is spread, but then you need to interact with it. Right? You need to allocate tests and nurses and vaccine and all kinds of resources, but then you will change the course of, 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 the, of, the, of the, the dynamics of the system. So then you need to be able you know, to react to the changes. Or you can also think about the forest fire mitigation. Like right? It's not just enough to predict where the forest will be, but you need to be able to plan ahead. If, if, a pressure, if the forest fire happens, and then how you should behave to mitigate it, and so on and so forth. Um, but the, real, the, the challenge of, uh, of these type of problems uh, are, are the following. So typically you are working with a very limited uh, number of resources. Um, you need to solve uh, very difficult uh, combinatorial optimization problems. And you need to solve these problems under uncertainty. I mean uncertainty, uh, uh, uncertainty here by uh, referring to you know, unknown future events. You, you'd make an action before you can see that what can happen. Right, to, uh, or uh, lack of observability, uh, for example, in the forest fire, if you send out a UAV you know, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to observe what's happening, maybe the sensors are not as good you know, to collect uh, uh, accurate data. So basically you need to deal with lots of noise uh, for when, you, when you look at the data, okay? So everything is together. This type of problem is known uh, within the AI community as uh, online combinatorial optimization under uncertainty. And, and in this talk, I will mention two of the, uh, the papers we have done uh, along this line. So one is, uh, is focusing on uh, mitigating forest fire with limited resources. And the other one was uh, motivated by the problem of housing allocation for, for homeless youth in, uh, in the US. Okay, actually, if you ask me any time, like, so um, I try to make this, uh, this, semi, uh, this uh, talk uh, um, informal. So, Feel free to jump in, ask questions. So let me start with the first paper. So this was published at 8 2020 with uh, Hao Chan and Vignesh uh, Vishwanathan. And the title is Fighting White Fights Under Uncertainty. So here's the um, uh, problem description. Uh, I try to keep the, the talk uh, high level, but, uh, so I don't, I'm not gonna go into the technical details, just you know, uh, explaining things uh, um, enough so that you can understand what we are dealing with. So basically cons consider a, a, a map and the map is divided into N zones. Uh, and each time step, um, we assume that the, the zone I can catch a fire with some kind of intensity. So this intensity is, is, a, is a real number between zero and some upper bound C. 
Um, this incentivity in our model indicates the, the minimum number of firefighters you need and needed to extinguish the fire. Mm. So some kind of uh, measure for the, the, the strength of the fire. And then at each zone I has the important value KI, uh, KIT actually, because uh, the, 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 the value, the importance value can change over time. And, and this will represent how, how much we want to save this, uh, this area from, uh, from uh, being burned down by the fire. And then uh, from our side, uh, from the decision makers uh, side, we have uh, our firefighter units. Uh, this is fixed for now over time. So we don't deal with the case uh, in our paper uh, mm -hmm. with the case when we have different uh, firefighter units per time. And uh, at each time, what you need to do is to uh, decide how, how many units you're going to allocate to each zone I. Um, and, and this is denoted by the, number, by the, the parameter DIT. Okay, so what happens here is that uh, if you allocate enough uh, firefighter units to the, the zone which is burning, uh, meaning that the, the number of allocated resources is larger than the intensity of the fire, then you recover, you fully recover the area and you get you know, the, the reward of KIT, which means that you save the area. Otherwise, unfortunately, we assume that you, uh, you let the, the, the area burn being burned down. So we just assume that uh, you don't get any rewards there. Okay, and then the objective function we want to do here is uh, to, uh, to maximize our aggregated reward over time. Uh, we try to, uh, to save as much uh, uh, forest as possible. Subject to, at each time step, we cannot use more than our uh, firefighter units. Okay. Um, um, so edit, question? yeah, uh... yes, please. Just, just for clarification, is it reasonable to assume that the intensity uh, information is known? No, no, this is something I will explain in the next, uh, so this is just a basic model, and then I will explain what answer that we have. And yes, um, we don't know the intensity, so we have to learn it over time. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Okay, so, um, so here's the problem. So um, we have lots of un information uncertainty. So we don't know the fire intensity. This is exactly what you asked uh, before. So we don't know intensity in advance. Um, another thing is that the fire intensity in our model doesn't need to be stochastic or stationary. So so we might you might think that you choose you know historical data and then try to learn what will happen next. We assume that this is impossible, so we try to go for the worst case scenario. But we still claim that we 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 will be managed to to, to tackle this problem as well. Uh, and because of this lack of, of underlying stochastic model, uh, we assume that the, the fire intensity can change arbitrarily over time. And this might sound a little bit weird, but actually it captures, uh, mathematically can capture nicely a lot of, of, of different models. Okay. And then uh, there's another assumption that we rely on, and this is very crucial actually. Um, so if we allocate one, one fire fighter unit to a region, then actually we will be able to observe the uh, the fire intensity there. So assume this assumes that the each of the uh, the firefighter units has the knowledge and expertise, you know, to ex uh, to to observe the, uh, the uh, to accurately observe the, um, the the fire intensity. Okay, and this is quite crucial for our for our model. Okay, so let's let's look at the idealistic case. So when we have everything in advance, we know the fire intensity, we know we know all the uh, the values of the uh, of the of the uh, regions. Then this problem can be formulated as something we call a uh, knapsack problem. So probably many of you are familiar with knapsack, but just you know for the sake of, uh, of being on the same page, uh, uh, let me briefly discuss what this is. So basically, you have a knapsack, which is a bag. Uh, it has a capacity of R, uh, and we have a bunch of items out there outside of the, of, of the knapsack. Uh, and each, uh, uh, each item has a weight, uh, how heavy it is, and a value. Right? And you start packing items into this, this, uh, this knapsack. You cannot exceed the, the capacity of knapsack, but you want to maximize the total uh, value of, uh, of, of the um, items within this knapsack. And this is a very well known NP hard problem. From computer science. Okay, so in this case, we can say that the knapsack capacity is the number of firefighters. R, we have items at the zones, that the weights of the zone is uh, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the intensity, 
uh, phi intensity of that uh, that uh, that zone, and the value we get is uh, the value in the of, of the of the of the region if we manage to save the the um the, the that region. Okay, so um, we could solve this with a, as as a knapsack problem, and the good news is that um, although it is an NPR problem in general. But uh, if the knapsack uh, has the following property, uh, if the, the weights are bounded above by a constant value C, which is the case in our, in our problem, then actually we can solve this problem uh, in, uh, in linear time. And, uh, and, and basically it, it's based on dynamic programming. So, uh, so dynamic programming is, is gonna be limited because of this C, fixed, fixed C value. So it's gonna be very fast. Okay, so this is the ideal case when we have all the information. Uh, um, what does what does C correspond to in 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 from the firefighting perspective or the firefighting domain perspective? So probably probably about like you if you allocate thousand thousand uh, fire units then probably none of the fires will so all of the fires out there will be enough to uh, to to be extinguished by by let's say a thousand units of of uh, in in theory right? it doesn't have to be uh, realized but in theory thousand okay. units should be enough okay, okay because uh, the the strength of fire is not infinite. Okay. Okay. So, um, but the problem is that we have this lots of uncertainty. So, how to tackle it? So, before I show how we solve this problem, let me let me uh, introduce something we call uh, from from the uh, the online uh, machine learning community uh, research, um, literature, which is called the Martian Bandit. Martian is one of the seamless uh, models uh, in decision making, in signature decision making, and uncertainty. And, uh, and it uh, can be briefly described as follows. So you have a, a bunch of arms, like each of them is a, is a one-arm bandit, uh, you know, the slot machine from the casino. Um, you pull an arm, you get the reward. Um, unfortunately, we don't know in advance uh, the distribution of this reward. Um, or in, in the adversary case, uh, this reward is, is generated by by an adversary who doesn't use any stochastic uh, um, process at all. So he just randomly picks a, a value uh, in advance for us. The goal in this Martian bandit model is to maximize the expected total reward over time, uh, over t uh, time steps. Okay, so this is uh, the, the, the basic description of the Martian bandit model. The nice thing about this model is that it's very flexible that uh, it can fit into, uh, it, it has lots of variations and, and uh, it can fit into many, many uh, problems. Uh, the algorithmic solutions of these models are typically very simple and very uh, fast uh, in terms of uh, computation time. And it typically enjoy uh, rigorous uh, and tight theoretical performance guarantees. And this is a nice thing. That's why we want to use Martian band because uh, it's very simple, very fast algorithms and theoretically they are very sound. Okay, so let's, um, let's get back to our problem. Um, so in, the, in, in our paper, what we have done is that we took one of the Martian bandit models um, or online learning models called follow the bird to leader, FPL. And we applied uh, to, um, to, to our forest fire mitigation problem as follows. So here's a sketch of the algorithm. So suppose we have some unbiased estimators of the, all the fire intensities A, uh, AI tau up to, up to the previous time step. I will explain later how we're gonna get these uh, these unbiased estimators. But suppose for now we have them. Then we could take the average of these estimates over over the the, you know, the the previous time steps, the zone, and then we add some noise to this average. This is why this is called the perturbation. Like right? so that's why it's called the follow the, uh, the, the we perturb the values a little bit, uh, and we get this uh, a hat thing. And then we do the same for the zone values because we assume that we don't know the zone values either. We are learning them over time, right? And then we get this, uh, this estimate A hat and K hat. And we solve the knapsack problem with these estimates. And then we allocate the firefighters uh, and, uh, uh, by you know, solving this uh, knapsack problem optimally and then use the optimal solution to allocate the firefighters. And then we observe the true values, the true inter fire intensity and the true uh, uh, Worth of the of the area, then of course we update our estimates for the next time step, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there are two crucial points here. So one is like how to get these uh, unbiased estimators, um, and the second one is like why to add this this uh, this uh, uh, noise to it. Uh, so before that, uh, let's uh, let, let, 
So there are two questions. If you're not familiar with the, with the bandit literature, probably you might ask this too. So first of all, uh, I mentioned already that, uh, that in our case, we don't assume any stochastic uh, process, uh, underlying stochastic process. So there's no uh, real um, statistical relation between you know, historical data and future data. But why we still use uh, the average uh, of the historical data to, uh, to, uh, to calculate the estimates? So the answer is the following. So uh, in, uh, in the FPL and in online learning in general, we, what we try to learn is some best fixed allocation in hindsight. And this is very important. So we're not trying to learn the, you know, the optimal solution, offline solution, which tries to, uh, to be optimal every time step, which can change over time. But we fix, we, we want to find the one, a fixed strategy, which we don't change over time. And we try to compare ourselves against it. It is still uh, impossible, to, I mean, it's still very difficult to learn uh, that fixed strategy without knowing the future uh, values in advance. So it is something still, you know, uh, uh, not 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 possible. But we can prove that we can get quite close to it. And our performance can get quite close to the performance of this best fix in hindsight. Okay, so that's uh, and if we do so, then actually if we aim to do that, then actually taking the historical data is useful because as time passes by, the fact that uh, that the best fix arm in hindsight changes uh, rapidly is not going to be true. So we're going to be slowly converging you know, to best in hindsight. So, so gradually we'll be able to learn which one is the best fit in hindsight by looking at the historical data. No, by okay, the way, so, there's, there's something off with your background. I don't, I mean, maybe you want to fix that. We are seeing, I don't know if I'm the only one who's seeing trees in the background uh, of your picture. Really? Yeah. Ah. Uh, how can I change here? Good question. Or maybe I mean, if it's too difficult to 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 change it, I think we can we can go start. If it, I just wanted to mention it in case you want, there was some easy way to change. Yeah, this is interesting. I I can't see myself either. Anyway, so yeah, just ignore me. Okay. Just yeah, ignore me yeah, now. yeah. Let's go. Let's My go. apologies. Yeah. Okay, so so let's get back to the 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 question of um. Uh, of uh, getting the unbiased estimate of these uh, fire intensities. So how can we do that? And this trick is quite common in uh, in uh, statistics and and uh, and uh, Martian bandit lit uh, literature, which is called importance weighted uh, estimation. So basically, instead of like just observing the uh, the value, uh, uh, taking the observed value, because there are a lot of of areas we haven't visited uh, uh, in the past and 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 in our current uh, time step, we don't we don't see this true observed version of it. If we take this observe, we take this formula. So this is the indicator that we will choose the area. We will allocate someone to that area divided by probability that we allocate at least one person to that area. And we, we multiply with the true value that this, this estimator in expectation will give you the true value. So this is exactly what we need. It is a random variable. And this random variable has an expectation of our true value. So that's an unbiased estimator. Okay, so from now on, we will use this uh, this uh, random variable to to do all of our calculations. Okay, so um, uh, but the problem in in FPL, so in order to calculate this uh, uh, random variable to uh, to derive this random, we need to be able to calculate the probability that we will allocate at least one unit to uh, to a certain region. This problem is quite difficult in in our algorithm in our, in in our framework. The the F follows the probability the framework, and the reason is because it depends on the underlying solution, the optimal solution of the knapsack problem. So if the knapsack problem provides a different solution, optimal solution, the probability is going to be different. Yes, but how how can we how can we still estimate this? And uh, and uh, luckily, uh, Gary and I and and Gabo Bar talked back in uh, 2013. It's their conference paper, but the journal paper version is from 2015. They suggested the following very nice idea. So let's do something. Let's do a geometric sampling of the whole thing. So instead of solving the underlying knapsack once, we, just, we, we, we solve the problem several times. And we stop uh, whenever we allocate at least one um, fire, firefighter unit to that particular region. So we want to estimate this property for this part of particular region I, right? So we just you know, flip a coin, flip a coin until you know we get we get an allocation, 
a positive allocation to that region. And, and you know, from a, from a, from a geometric distribution, you know that this, uh, the, the count of, uh, of, of this experiment, how, how, how many times we need to repeat this, uh, this, uh, this uh, 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 resampling, uh, gives you, you know, the reciproc of the property, what we need, this one here. And this is exactly what we need, because if you look at the formula here, this is what we need. This is one over the P, right? So this is quite a quite good estimate of that. Okay, so now we don't need to know explicitly the value, but we, we have a way, we have a way to estimate this property. Okay, um, so that was the, um, the firefighter allocation. Um, the problem with this itself is that, is that it, we are comparing ourselves with the specifics allocation in hindsight, right? And we try to learn this, we try to, to approximate it. The problem with this is that the best specifics allocation in hindsight can be still arbitrarily bad compared to the optimal solution. So, so what we try to do is to improve this, uh, the, uh, the performance of our algorithm is that we, we, we look at, we, we got back to a real life situation and we realized that actually we can use drones to explore before, before we do the resource allocation. And this is something that turns out to be very helpful for us as well, because we can get more informed allocation. Right? We, can, we can learn more information and based on that we can do much better allocation. Um, and this is exactly what, uh, what uh, happened. Uh, but in order to formulate the problem of the UAV allocation, we, we turn to graph theory and, uh, and we use something called observation graph. Okay, so it means that each node here in our case represents a zone, uh, the, the, re the region of the, of, the, of, the, of the area we are in. Like, so if we, uh, we allocate a UAV or a drone to a zone, to a node, it will be able to observe the fire of, uh, of that node and of the neighboring nodes as well. So this, that's why this is called observation graph. Okay, so, so adjacent nodes means that observability. Okay. And questions we ask here in our in in, in this case is that uh, uh, first question is that given M drones, what is the best drone allocation in terms of like the best information gain we can get? Okay. And then there's another another question is what is the minimum number of drones we uh, we need to use in order to observe all the regions to cover the whole the whole uh, graph? Okay. Uh, and uh, in, in our paper, we look at the, the second question. So we want to try to minimize the number of drones needed in order to get all the information. And, uh, and we have a, a, a quite nice theorem, uh, but it requires the assumption that the graph itself, the, the observation graph is a random, a random graph, it's a Schrödinger random graph. So if, uh, if, uh, if this is uh, the case, then actually we just need a log n, where n is not zones, log n, uh, a number of of, uh, of 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 drones to uh, to cover the whole area, okay. Um, and there are some some colors we have here, you know, in terms of like uh, computation, how to design an algorithm which is uh, uh, fast enough to uh, to to compute uh, um, this this optimal uh, set of uh, of of, of uh, um, uh, allocation of observations, and. Uh, and we apply them to we apply them to our paper. But I'm not going into the details, but you can read the paper for if you are interested in it. So, so long okay. one one. Uh, can I ask one question? Uh, what's not clear to me is what, how what at, at a high level what are you using this, these drones for with respect to your multi armed bandit, bandit architecture? What role? Yeah, do so, so if you if you look at this um, algorithm here, then. Uh, then once you have once you have the uh, the full coverage, you don't need these steps anymore. You don't need the estimates. You don't need the uh, the, the the perturbation. You don't need anything. Basically, you have the true values all the time. And if you have the true values all the time, whenever you solve a knapsack problem, it is optimal. So basically, you can get to optimal solution very easily. So you so then in that case, you won't need to run this FPL algorithm anymore. If you if you do have the, these drones, and you can employ these drones to find out the fire intensities in, in all these locations and you won't need to apply multi on bandits anymore. Then it basically becomes yes. a straight up. Okay. Okay. Yes, exactly. But of course in real life, in real life, we, we don't have that luxury. Right? So we still, we still need to deal with the case if we don't have enough drones. And here our experiments show that combining, uh, combining this uh, uh, drone allocation with the Martia underlying Martia bandit, which we call the fire fly, turns out to be that, uh, that it's, it's almost optimal. Uh, most of the cases, if we have enough drones, uh, so not 
I mean, enough means that just just ten percent of the we kind of only cover ten percent of the area is already almost you know ninety percent of the optimal solution and so on and so forth. So it's okay. quite it's a yes. So so one more question. I mean, so so this is interesting, but but then how does that algorithm work in which you have some drones which you can apply to some areas, and you assume that those areas and the neighboring areas you know the intent in, in, in fire intensities perfectly good but yes. then what about the remaining areas and, and how does the multi ant bandit yes. interact with the the remaining areas yeah so exactly so once you you go you you have the true values uh, you still need to estimate the rest uh, where you don't have the true observation right so right. that's where you get back to the to the fbi algorithm you choose the uh, the estimate the, the the importance weighted sampling to estimate and then and then in the end you choose the the, the knapsack solution to do the allocation and also if you choose the bandit algorithm to learn uh, uh, what would be the next step okay yeah? okay um, yeah, so that was the uh, the first part of the of the of the talk. So we are exactly at half time. So any other questions before we move to the second part? So is it the case that uh, for the first part, when you are uh, estimating uh, fire intensities for locations for which you don't have drones enough drones, right? Which you are using estimating using FPL, that there's a first online learning procedure where you are. Uh, not touching you're not you're not doing any knapsack allocations yet you're just trying to estimate on locations where you don't have observations and then once you build up estimates of those locations then you have basically estimates for all the locations uh, and then you solve a final knapsack problem which then tells you how to allocate your firefighters where yes yes okay. Great. Great. so so you can see from the from our paper that the, at the beginning because of the our there, 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 there's a version which we call conservative firefly. So we only allocate to areas where we have observations. And it turns out to be that, that uh, in some cases, it's actually not that bad. Uh, um, and the reason it's not that bad in, in some cases is because uh, you know, this, this uh, estimate we have, we use, it sometimes adds too much noise to it and it just you know, weakens, weakens the solution. Whereas if you, you go with something you know for sure, uh, in, in the short term gives you more, more reward and more, more uh, utility. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. So actually, in our paper, what we did is that we built a, a, fire, a, a meta firefly, which uh, which uh, switches between between this firefly algorithm and the conservative firefly algorithm, and try to learn that which one is better. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think that one we haven't published yet. It's a new in a, in an extended extended version of the paper. Yeah. But we have that one as well. Okay. Any other questions about the first part? If not, then let me continue with the uh, with the second part. So, oh, so this is uh, a zero blocking bandit that was published at New Lips, and it was joint work with my PhD student Nick Bishop, uh, uh, Hao Chan, and uh, Dev Maya Amanda from Colombia. So the, uh, the the motivation application of, of this paper is is the following. So you you have a, a bunch of, of homes uh, uh, which you would like to allocate to uh, to uh, uh, the needy people, and uh, and but the problem with this is that if you allocate uh, one one home unit, let's say a bed or or, or a, a flat, then actually it would be uh, uh, blocked from being reused in the next next round, right? Because for example, someone stays there for a year or maybe for six months. Then that house could be we cannot be reduced for that for that period. So we started looking at this problem, which we call the the, the, the block blocking uh, uh, resource uh, allocation. Um, so in our we have a fixed number of units, uh, beds or flats. Uh, we assume there's an online uh, um, nature here of the system. So at each round, we only assume there's one uh, user, one request requester arriving to the system. And uh, uh, if we decide to allocate a unit K to this, uh, to this requester, a time step K, then the requester will stay up to, uh, to other uh, uh, D, uh, capital D, K, T time steps. Okay. Um, as I already mentioned, it means that uh, this K unit cannot be allocated to someone else in, in this uh, uh, D, K, T time step. Uh -huh. After, after the allocation. Okay, so, so by allocating uh, this unit to this person, uh, the system receives certain reward, 
this could be you know a fitness of the match or you know, the way the way the person uh, is used to, uh, the, the 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 unit supposed to be it could be anything for us it's uh, it's the most important thing you uh, you need to to, to know is the, is the number and we want to maximize this total number of these uh, rewards over time uh, the challenge here is that uh, both uh, this uh, blocking uh, time uh, the dkt blocking interval and the reward can vary arbitrarily over time so we don't assume any underlying stochastic process here okay and and the objective as i already said is to maximize the total rewards uh, with collected over time over t time steps yeah so so we to tackle this problem we use a um, uh, the adversarial blocking bandit model this is a new model um, we we introduced it in, in our newest paper so it has k uh, arms representing the k units we pull one arm per time so this is you know representing the, the, the requester one requester coming to the system uh, per time step so after we pull an arm as i said uh, we get the reward uh, x kt uh, but then the arm is blocked for k for dkt time so it means that we cannot pull that arm uh, during that time okay this is a adversarial setting. So both the uh, D and K and X are, are, are a bit, they can change over time and they are not known before the pools. Okay. So the objectives are the same. And I need to mention that this is you know, the, the extension uh, of, uh, of another paper from uh, Neodif 2019 and the paper the authors, they look at the stochastic project. So we, we have an extension where we look at the non-stochastic setting of this, uh, of this blocking bandit model. Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, what we did is we start looking at the problem in the online offline setting. So where we have all the information in advance, and it's hard to be that even in that case, the problem is quite hard. Uh, it is uh, we have proof in our paper that it's a strongly anti-hard problem, um, and the main implication of this problem is that uh, is that. Uh, uh, if we reduce the, the, the FBI algorithm in the, uh, described in the previous uh, part of the talk, uh, it's not going to work because remember in the FBL, uh, we, we, every, there's, a time, there's, a, there's a step during each round which is solving an underlying problem. In the previous part, we, we solved the NAFSA problem. And we, do, we, we did that, we could do that because I, I said that the, that NAFSA version was, was quite efficient, right? it could be solved in polynomial time. But now it turned out to be that in our case, in this new version, in this new uh, uh, blocking bandit model, um, the, op the optimal, the underlying op uh, optimization problem, combinatorial optimization problem is, uh, is strongly anti-hard. So we're not gonna have a, a fast algorithm uh, if we choose the FPL. So we need to use something else, okay? Um, and then the second claim that we have uh, from, from this uh, theorem is that um, any, any online bandit algorithm uh, if we don't have any extra assumptions about the model, then any online bandit algorithm out there will not be able to perform good. We're not to, to be able to perform well. Like it's, uh, it's, they can have arbitrary bad performance. And the second claim we have here is that uh, um, it's not just you know performing very badly against the offline optimal. But even against you know, the online greedy algorithm, which basically what it does is that every time step, it just chooses the best arm available, and then it pulls it. It doesn't need to think anything. It doesn't need to know the future. It just needs to know that each round, what is the best arm, and then it chooses that arm and pull. Turns out to be that, again, this simple greedy algorithm, any bandit algorithms out there would perform arbitrary poorly as well. So you might ask that, okay, so these are the negative results. So what, what we can do here? Well, I say that we are trained engineers, we're trained computer scientists. So, so we, we are not afraid of, of impossibility results. And the way we did is that we introduced new assumptions to the model, you know, try to, to take a reasonable and, and justifiable assumption and try to understand that under these assumptions, whether the, the problem is solvable. It turns out to be that the answer is yes. And the, and the way we, we, uh, we, uh, we improve the model or, or, or um, uh, modify the model is the following. So we assume that the way the rewards change over time is limited. Okay? So it's not fully stochastic, um, but 
the change is bounded above by a budget. We call it total pass variation bound. Okay. So if you look at this formula, what it says is that what we are here in this uh, time step t, our reward is x. Next time we have x t plus one. Okay. So this change, if we accumulate over time for all arms, if it is bounded above, then actually we can solve the problem. And here's the way we solve it. So first of all, we got back to the uh, uh, offline setting. But long and so we one, one question. So is it not the case that if we do put if x, if you can you go back to the so if, if x k t is one, then then we won't be able to pull arm k for t at t plus one because because it's been blocked. Yes, yes, yes. So 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 we we assume that even during the block time, they still they still might be able to uh, some rewards, right? If you think about like instead of like choosing now, I choose next time, right? I choose next round. They still generate some rewards, right? They can still generate some rewards. But I, I assume that even in these cases, the rewards they don't change too much over time. Okay. So even when they are blocked. Um, can I ask you a question, Long? Yes. Um, can you go back to uh, one slide before this? I'm trying one to understand slide. claim uh, the one before. Yeah, it's claim yeah. two. So I'm I'm trying to understand claim two. Um, yeah. It says any online algorithm can perform arbitrarily poorly yeah. against the online greedy. Um, does but this does not necessarily mean that online greedy is outperforming any online bandit algorithm, right? Because you are creating an instance like a very bad yeah. instance yeah. where yeah. online yeah. bandit yeah. algorithm performs poorly. Exactly, exactly. So this doesn't mean that any, for any cases, uh, usually the, the lower bound results, uh, but uh, um, there's an instance, there's a very difficult instance, problem instance where your algorithm fails. Yeah. Right, so so then my, my next question is, is exactly that. So is it possible to, uh, I mean, essentially, can we say the exact opposite of this? Any online algorithm can also be poorly, uh, arbitrarily poorly against some uh, bandit algorithm? Uh, no, no. I think I think I think we we can prove that that uh, because in the end, what we try to learn is that uh, with uh, with the uh, with the extra assumption, uh, sorry, with the extra assumption, this bound. What we try to learn is exactly this online greedy algorithm. Okay, the online greedy algorithm which knows ahead the current arm values, but it doesn't know the future. It just knows currently what is the best arm and pulls that arm. So we are comparing ourselves against it. And we, we, we show that we show that the threat is getting smaller, uh, uh, super near, but, uh, but, uh, but in practice, we, we are not gonna be better than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so under that assumption, I, I can see that under the next assumption that comes in. Uh, but in general, um, I mean, my question is really without those assumptions. Like, so in general, is it anything that we can say about uh, an online greedy algorithm? Or can we construct an instance where online greedy algorithm, like one of those difficult instances that really fails badly? Um, yes, I think, yes. I think, I think we can do so because, uh, because uh, this dominance is not full, right? This doesn't mean that for any, any problem instances, this has to be better. Mm -hmm. Like we just we just show that there are certain instances where where our algorithm will fail, and this is something should be enough for us to not uh, not using it because who knows what problem instance we are facing against, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's 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 the point. That's the point of uh, of, of this claim uh, that we should not rely rely on online bandit algorithms unless we have something extra in the model. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, but thank you for the question. Yes. Okay, so here's the uh, the extra bit, the, uh, the 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 bounded path. Uh, sorry, the 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 the, the total pass uh, variation bound. So, so when, uh, we get back to the uh, to the performance uh, guarantee in uh, in the offline setting. Uh, then then um, sorry for all for the online greedy because if you actually yeah so here. Actually, back to your question before. So, for, if there's no no uh, uh, extra assumptions, that online greedy can also be very bad as well compared to the offline optimal. Yeah. So, I think I think this might answer your your question. Uh, but with this uh, extra assumption, it turns out to be that we can derive a bound for uh, for the approximation ratio for the online greedy algorithm. 
Okay, and this is this is the ratio. Uh, doesn't matter. It's, uh, the main takeaway here is that is that it's that it's uh, it's derivable, and then we're going to use this bound here to uh, to uh, uh, design our our bandit algorithm. Okay, so um, uh, here's a proof sketch. Uh, just quickly going through it. I just check what time. No, I don't have much time. Okay, so um, let's jump to the next slide. So now we uh, we solve the the bandit model. Okay, so. Remember, we have the online greedy uh, algorithm now, which has the approximate, proof approximation ratio. And now we move to the bandit model. Now, our first assumption, our next assumption is that suppose we know this bound ahead. So we, someone tells us that the, the change is not gonna be bigger than this number, okay? So what we do here is that we, um, we design the following uh, bandit algorithm. So we split the, the time horizon into batches, the delta t uh, batches. And each, within each batch, what we try to do is, is a frame. So we pull each arm once, and then we just let it uh, there. We don't not, not gonna pull anything else. We just let it uh, let all the arms uh, be available again. So this requires us uh, d, uh, d plus k time steps. And then we, we choose the observed rewards from this one single pool of per arm. We use them as an estimate of the arms for the rest of the batch, okay? And then we use this online greedy algorithm, which we we uh, we we mentioned here. We use this online greedy algorithm to to do the allocations with these fixed uh, uh, estimates over time. And of course, we do it until you know, the last d time steps, uh, where we don't do anything. We just let the system run, uh, and we don't allocate anything to anyone. Okay. Uh, and then we restart the process for the next batch. And um, we can prove that by doing so, and if you uh, uh, optimize the batch length uh, properly, then what you're gonna get is a, is a regret of uh, square root t uh, times root the budget, okay? Um, I need to highlight one thing. This is something we use here. This is not the, the original regret, but this is approximate regret. And the approximate regret here uh, means that we try not to uh, learn against you know, the best uh, of the optimal solution, but against uh, this, uh, this online greedy, which has an approximation ratio, okay? So actually we're converging to the, to the online greedy uh, in a sublinear regret. But I need to highlight this is for the case of known variation budget. For the case of unknown variation budget, uh, the trick doesn't work because, uh, because in order to, to optimally tune the batch length, we need to know the budget size. Like we need to know the upper bound. So it cannot be used for the case you don't know that budget bound. So what we have done is that we design a meta bandit model. And the meta bandit model uh, is different uh, budget candidates. So for each budget candidate, it uh, generates a, a bandit algorithm. And then it runs the previous algorithm for each of these candidates. And then we use a high level bandit uh, model to, to learn that which, which, uh, which budget candidate would be the best for our case. Okay? So if you do so, actually you can get uh, something in the bound as well. It's not very nice uh, as, as the, the, the previous one because the, uh, the uh, dependency is t and power of three fourths uh, and the dependency on, uh, on the budget uh, is, uh, is, is, is half. Okay, mm. and then of course, uh, of course, uh, uh, we can say a few things that uh, that uh, that. Uh, so this is this is not the, the whole budget. This is the budget within uh, one meta block. Okay, or within one 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 meta block uh, of the of the meta bandit algorithm. And um, and we prove that this is uh, this is uh, achievable. But then the question is whether this is the best for the unknown variation budget case. We don't know. Okay. Um, some observation we have uh, is, that, uh, is that for the known budget case, it turns out to be that the result we get is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is a matching with the lower bound because we, we get the lower bound here. Uh, sorry, this, this is a wrong uh, notation. This should be omega here. Okay, so, so at, at least square root t times db. For the unknown budget case, we don't know what is a lower bound for the regret. So this is still an open question. Okay, so uh, so this was the second part of the paper. Any questions, uh, technical questions about it?
I just quickly mention a few things. So there, there are there are quite a few uh, computer papers out there which which combines computer optimization with bandits and apply them to uh, to AI for social good as well. Just to name a few that uh, probably the worth mentioning is is the recent best paper award uh, uh, that uh, Lily Su and 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 her her co-authors got at the Trip AI 2021. This is for um, anti-poaching uh, wildlife protection using Martian bandit models. But uh, but with uh, with some of my co-authors like Hai Feng Su, for example, we also use uh, similar ideas to uh, tackle uh, illegal fishing problems or network interaction problems. Uh, or you know, it's an upcoming AMAS conference, AMAS 2021. Uh, Millions Group has two papers there uh, where they use uh, restless funds uh, to tackle healthcare problems, healthcare challenges, and and we also have a, an uh, upcoming AMAS paper which we uh, we did the Martian bandit modeling to avoid the uh, the tragedy of the common situations in 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 um, um, social good uh, problems. Okay, so this is a summary of what I would like to uh, to, to, uh, to to talk about, to, to say. So AI for social good, it is a very potential and important application domain for AI and, and machine learning. Uh, I believe that this is something uh, you, you probably you believe uh, and you share the belief with me as well. Um, apart from the, the mainstream machine learning uh, techniques where you, you, know, you understand, to try to understand the underlying data of nature and, and predict what happens in the future, uh, we also have a lot of resource allocation problems within this uh, this domain. And this requires solving a bunch of combinatorial optimization problems under uncertainty. And I believe that, uh, that the bandit model combined with this uh, combinator optimization framework is a very efficient tool uh, to tackle these type of problems. Okay, and just one last slide to shameless advertisement. So if you look at, at this uh, slide, there's quite a lot of papers from AMAS. And, uh, and yeah, so AMAS is coming um, uh, in May. Uh, registration is very cheap, $30. So if you haven't registered and you are interested in, in this type of work, then yeah, please, uh, please uh, register. Um, early birth deadline is 1st of March. And just to give you some higher motivations why you should, uh, why you want to, uh, to attend this conference if you haven't been there before, is that if you, this is a quite famous paper from I think two years ago, uh, a lot of uh, leading machine learning researchers came together and wrote a paper about how to use machine learning to tackle climate change. And actually many of the problems they described in, uh, in this paper uh, are actually very relevant to the Marty um, sorry, the Marty re agents research community. So we have been discussing and, and tackling those problems for a while now. And it's good that people you know, are getting, uh, paying attention to it uh, these days. Okay, so just a further references of the paper if, uh, of, of my talk, if you're interested in reading them uh, in the future. And yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And I think I have seven minutes for questions. Thank you, thank you, Long. Thank you so much. For the wonderful talk uh we have time for questions guys if, if somebody has any questions i guess there were several questions asked uh during the middle of the talk as well but there, if there are more questions we can take them now anybody so i guess maybe i can get started uh long so uh about the second part of your talk, the adversarial blocking bandit model, I guess what was not very clear to me is what changes because of the blocking aspect that was not clear to me as in what, what gets more difficult in the problem uh, when you start blocking because, because uh, as you were saying, you're still getting rewards for those arms uh, even when you block those arms off. So but you don't see you don't see those arms the values so even if you're blocked you don't you cannot use the trick like that, that weight uh, importance weighted sampling tricks that you to have an unbiased estimator of those blocks because you don't get access to them for sure so the probability to pull them is zero right so you cannot uh, so if you you look at like, for example in the FBL algorithm maybe maybe this is the best uh, so this 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 formula here right so this formula gives you an an unbiased estimator for the arms you haven't pulled right and it relies on the fact that you, you have a probability to pull that arm positively, right? Positive probability to pull that arm. But if it is blocked, the probability that you're gonna pull that arm is zero. So you're not gonna be able to, to have this formula, for example, that's, that's one issue. The another issue is that the, it, it comes from the, uh, the combinatorial aspect. It turns out to be that the, it, even solving it is, is difficult, right? So, so you're not gonna be able to have an a, 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 a efficient algorithm to, to, to estimate. And that's why we have to add the, um, uh, what is the, the, the budget to it, 
the variation budget. Because with this variation budget, we can say that it's quasi close to the case where nothing changes. And the, the, the extreme is that the, the order exit, nothing changes. And if nothing changes, it's easy to learn, right? You just observe once and then you know everything, right? But if, if things change slowly, yeah, there's still, there's still, uh, there's still uh, a hope that you're gonna be able to learn things. I see, I see. And and secondly, uh, thank you for that answer. So, and, and secondly, I would like to relate this back to the, the homeless housing allocation problem that you had uh, listed as motivation in the beginning. So in that case, uh, are there any particular reasons? So, I mean, the most naive thing that I can think of is that, you know, you have a set of homeless people, uh, all of them want houses and hence they have an arm inside the, inside the multi-armed banner. Right. And then you pull these arms and by pulling an arm, you're assigning one of these people to a house. Right. And then you're not allowed to pull this arm again because now that house has been blocked in some sense. Right. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you, you can give somebody else a house. So, uh, and I guess the, the, the rewards that you're getting is, is dependent on, uh, on, 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 on how, so, so the reward in some sense, in some sense is, is responsible for capturing everything uh, ranging from a person's need, how, how susceptible are they, if they don't get a house, how bad the situation is, all of that is, is maintained inside the reward. People who are going to be uh, homeless, people who are going to be more susceptible to you know, bad things, if, if they don't get houses, they will, if you match, if, the, if, if you pull that arm, there are chance, I mean, then you're going to get higher rewards. So all of that is, is contained inside the, that, that abstract reward basically, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, do you have any? Uh, because I I know that there there are other people who have uh, published in exactly the same space as well uh, on on assigning homeless youth to housing programs. So I wonder if if you can uh, sort of test this out using their real world data that they have. Uh, so I, I... so we have we have the real world data because uh, we have, we 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 have been involved uh, in in this project uh, uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we test it on, on, on the real data and, and that will be the extension of the paper. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, but I think, I think in order to be, uh, be applied in real life, uh, we need one extra thing, which is like the truthful mechanism because people can lie about their conditions yeah. thing like this, right? and, mm -hmm. then, and then you're not, just, you're not just allocating one person, but you're allocating a bunch of person together. So you might need some kind of matching algorithm there. You might need to have, but the problem with matching is that once you, you put uh, the blocking on it, so this, this is, uh, we're working on it right now uh, as an extension of this paper, it turns out to be the truthfulness might not be achievable. So we need to, to come up with all the mechanisms and, and it's not that easy. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. Great. Uh, thank you, Long. Uh, are there any other questions, final questions? We have two minutes left. Well, if there are no more questions, let's thank Long. Thank you so much, Long, for you know uh, coming here and, and giving a talk uh, about your wonderful research. I learned a lot for sure and I, I'm sure everybody else learned a lot as well.